Okay, so we'll get going. The clinical history of the patient was a 45-year-old male with progressive loss of vision over the past 18 months. On CT imaging, we saw that there's a, a supercellar uh, hypodensity with uh, peripheral uh, hyperdensity surrounding it. Uh, the image is on uh, contrast, uh, so therefore we can't fully distinguish between whether they're uh, uh, calcifications or if it's actually enhancement, but due to the high density, we, we might lean towards calcification. We see on the MR imaging, the T2 axial, that there's a hyperintense multilocular uh, supercellular lesion with some solid component. Uh, on the T1 imaging, we see that there's a hypo-intense uh, center surrounded with uh, uh, hyper-intensity surrounding. The contrast imaging showed that there was uh, peripheral uh, enhancement and some solid component enhancement uh, posteriorly. The patient then underwent fr uh, frontal craniotomy and uh, partial tumor resection and they noted post-surgical improvement of the visual impairment. Follow-up images at four months, uh, they showed that there was a full resolution uh, of, of the lesion. So the first question is, what is not included in the differential diagnosis? Uh, first, we have a pituitary macroadenoma, second, medulloblastoma, third, craniopharyngioma, and fourth, a Rathke cleft cyst. then be your diagnosis based on uh, the remaining options. Uh, first, pituitary macroadenoma, uh, medulloblastoma, <coughs> craniopharyngioma, or rathodic cholesterol. Uh, uh, craniopharyngioma. So that's what we're going to be the, discussing today. Uh, craniopharyngioma, it's a benign, often partially cystic cellar region tumor uh, derived from the rathgate pouch epithelium. Uh, it's a large supercellar component, usually in 95% uh, of the cases. Most involve both the supercellar and the intracellular spaces, about 75%. Uh, a purely intracellular location is quite uncommon. Uh, that's happening in about less than 5% of the cases, and it may be associated with the expansion of the pituitary fossa. So once we know a little bit about the, uh, the mass being a craniopharyngioma, well, we have to know that they do come in two histological types. Which one of these do you think is more common in adults? And I lowered it only to two choices to make it slightly easier, if possible. It might be the most difficult question, but... So we have the choices, adenomet adenomatinomus, or papillary. Okay. Very good. So we see that uh, the papillary type is found in adults, but it is the less percentage of the lesions. It's only being about 10% of the lesions, whereas the majority are found in children. So uh, the craniopharyngioma, we see that it has a bimodal age distribution, the peak being at 5 to 15 years, and the papillary uh, craniopharyngioma being at greater than 50 years. Uh, Multi-lobulated, uh, often large, uh, greater than 5 centimeters, and occasionally uh, multi-compartmental. On non-contrast, we see that uh, there's the 90% rule. About 90% of the tumors are mixed solid uh, type uh, with cystic, and 90% uh, calcify and 90% enhance. Uh, the papillary type is often solid, uh, isodense, and rarely calcifies. Our MRI findings, we see that uh, type 1 can have a classic findings of hyperintensity, cis plus uh, heterogeneous nodule, and the less common type uh, can be isodense uh, solid component, whereas we see a vivid enhancement on the contrast enhancement. Uh, on T2, the cysts are variably hyperintense. There's a solid component be heterogeneous or hyperintense and calcified portions. 
what happens is sometimes when you're going over cases, you happen to have on, on call a case that comes in. So this actually was about from a week and a half ago when preparing, we saw uh, one of our residents saw uh, on call that there was a patient who came in being about 40 years old with uh, visual symptoms and noted that there was a supercellular mass with uh, what appeared to be uh, hyperdensities within it. Uh, we ran, it's uh, uh, running the diagnosis of potential of being a cranial pharyngioma. However, the patient is then gonna undergo MRI in the next few days to see what the actual uh, diagnosis is. Uh, so what are the other options? We have the Rathay class cyst, which can be a non-calcified, less heterogeneous. Um, it does not uh, enhance. And we see oftentimes this claw sign, which can be the enhancing pituitary draped around the cyst. Uh, however, small uh, rectal class cysts can be indistinguishable from rare intracellular uh, craniopharyngiomas. And they also sometimes express the uh, cytokines 8 and 20. Pitu pituitary macroadenoma can be rare in uh, prepubescent uh, children. They're isointense with the brain. They enhance strongly. However, once again, they also can mimic the craniopharyngioma when cystic and hemorrhagic <coughs> components are included. Intracranial teratoma, uh, as we know, it comes from the three, uh, the three uh, layers. So they can sometimes have elevated uh, alpha fetoprotein and uh, CEA. They usually have a cystic and solid component and demonstrate at least some fat and calcification as a distinguishing feature. Uh, they're usually uh, T1, they're hyperintense components due to the fat, proteinaceous uh, lipid-rich fluid, or intermediate components of soft tissue, or hypointense components due to blood products and calcifications. A lot of times we see the, the mixed components within it and that can dis differentiate it from uh, our finding. Merci beaucoup. Merci.